Paging GraphQL, Paging GraphQL. What's up, everyone? Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. If you haven't guessed, we're talking about pagination in Spring for GraphQL today. Now, I've done a video on this in the past. I will leave a link to that in the description below. But at the time, Spring for GraphQL didn't support pagination, so we had to kind of roll our own. And we did. It worked, right? Uh, we had to set up a controller method and take in some arguments like limit and offset, and we were able to use Spring Data's pagination support and kind of wire this together. But there's a big problem here. When you kind of roll your own, that means that you can roll your own in different services. So if we have a bunch of services in our organization and we're not all on the same page, we may have implemented pagination differently in different services. And this is not good, right? We want a consistent manner. And this is where specifications come in. In this case, we're talking about the GraphQL cursor connection specification. This is a specification that kind of lays out how you can provide pagination support in your GraphQL APIs. Now, here we are over on graphql.org. Uh, there are some different approaches to pagination. They explain them here. So we have plurals, pagination, and edges. Um, and so on. So there's end of list, counts, uh, a whole bunch of things going on. Um, one of the things that you'll see here is pagination and edges. Uh, we could do something like, hey, give me the first two and here's the offset, or give me the first two after whatever specific ID we want to kind of use as a cursor, right? Um, and this is a really good um, explanation here. In general, we found that cursor-based pagination is the most powerful of those designs. So you can go through and read this. I'm not going to read it all to you. But what we end up with is the ability to get back things like this. So now we have a specification here. We're saying, hey, when you call pagination, here's what you're going to pass. Here's what you're going to get back. Things like edges. So edges are going to have nodes. That node is the actual thing that you want back. So in this case, a friend. Whatever uh, fields are on friend, those are the things you'll get back. But you also get back page info, things like, hey, this is the first page, how many counts, like, et cetera, the page info, right? And then you get cursor-specific information. Which cursor are we on? So this is the specification that Spring for GraphQL has implemented. And I'm really happy to see this because even before I knew this was a specification, I was using this on my own website. And I was really hoping that Spring for GraphQL would pick this up because I'm used to using something like this. So that's another thing, familiarity. If you move from one GraphQL implementation to another, this should look familiar. You've probably used it somewhere else. So this is what I'm excited about. Pagination support in Spring for GraphQL using the cursor connection specification. So how do we get started with this? Well, the good news is it's available in Spring for GraphQL 1.2. So if you're using the latest version of 3.1.1 at the time of this recording, pagination support is available. Now for this demo, I'm going to choose 3.2.0, the snapshot. Again, this has nothing to do with the pagination support in Spring for GraphQL and everything to do with something new in Spring Data to be able to kind of support this. And we'll talk about that later. I don't want to get hung up on that now. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 3.2. We're going to use Maven. We're going to use Java. I'm going to say that this is dev.danvega. We're going to call this sessions. Again, I've kind of used this domain model. We're building out this application that manages events, conferences, sessions, speakers, that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to choose Java 20. And then we need to go ahead and pick some dependencies. So I'm going to choose web. We're going to choose Spring Data JPA. I'm going to need a database, so I'm going to pick Postgres. I'm also going to choose that Docker Compose support. If you don't want to do this, if you don't have Docker, don't worry about it. Get rid of Postgres. Get rid of Docker Compose. Just use H2. It's the same thing uh, that we're going to use today. So, um, OK, and finally, we'll just need Spring for GraphQL, and that is it. Now, there are a few other dependencies that we'll add to the project as we go along to kind of build this out. Um, everything that we're going to talk about today is going to be in the repository listed in the description below. We are going to have to build out some of this application first, so none of it's there for you. Uh, we're going to have to build out the GraphQL schema, the Java entities on the Spring Data JPA side, you know, get all of that stuff working. So if none of that interests you and you're like, Dan, I already know how to build out JPA stuff, I'll leave some links in the description, some timestamps. 
and you can basically jump to, okay, the app's been built, let's talk about the GraphQL pagination stuff. But for those interested, I thought we'd just go ahead and build this out together. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and generate this project. This is going to download a zip. Uh, you can open it up in whatever IDE text editor you're most productive in. I'm gonna open it up in IntelliJ Ultimate Edition, and I will see you in there. Let's go. All right, quickly before we jump into IntelliJ, I just want to take a look at the data model. It's going to be very simple. I thought about making this a little bit more complex and how I might model this in the real world, but I decided to just kind of keep this simple. So we have an event, has a whole bunch of information about an event, which has a collection of sessions. A session has ID, title, descriptions, tags. So Spring Framework, Spring Boot, Spring Security, et cetera. Those are stored in a table as well in the tag table. We have the level, like beginner, intermediate, advanced. Uh, this ties back to the event. Uh, and then this ties to a speaker, where we store things like name, title, company, gender, country, email, phone number, and Twitter. So overall, pretty basic. This is what we're going to run with. So back in the IDE here, I'm going to start. I'm going to refactor this and name this application. I'm going to click OK, and once I'm done there, I'm going to open up Source Main Resources GraphQL, and we're going to create a new file in here called schema.graphql, graphqls, and we're going to start with our schema here. So this is basically what our schema is going to look like. We're going to paste in some code here and talk about it. So I have some queries. Uh, I want to get all the events. I want to get one event. I want to get all the speakers. I want to get one speaker. The event has all the information we just saw in that graphic. The session has, again, those things as well. Has a tag. We have a speaker. And then we have an enum for gender, male, female, non-binary. So that is our kind of data model. The first thing we got to do is fix this. Uh, we have a date and a URL. And I don't, uh, we are representing date here. Um, but we are going to need to fix this. It's not going to like that until we kind of correct those custom scholar types. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a new uh, package here. We're going to call this config. And inside this config, I'm going to create a new Java class. We'll call this GraphQL config. And this is going to be a configuration class. And what we'll need to do here is just go ahead and declare those custom scholar types. So how do we do that? By going over to our palm.xml. And we need to declare that custom dependency. So that is um, GraphQL Java Extended Scholars. Um, and we're going to bring in a specific version. So let's go ahead and reload that. And with that in place, we can go in and write our custom config. So again, just to save some time going through this first part, I'm just going to paste some code in. Uh, we've talked about this in previous videos. I'll leave links to those in the description below if you wonder where these custom scholar types are coming from. So we have our custom scholar types. We have our schema. We have a schema, folks. We are good to go. Now we need to build out the Java side of this, right? We're using Spring Data JPA. We need um, entities for things like events, sessions, speakers, um, tags, all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with event. So I'm going to create a new package in here called event. And we can go ahead and create a new Java class. We'll call this event. Uh, this is going to be an entity in the world of Spring Data JPA. Let's go ahead and just start with the uh, fields in here. So I'm going to start with this. I'm not going to do any associations yet. Um, so let's go ahead and create our uh, public NOR constructor. So event that will satisfy JPA. And then we'll need a constructor for all of our args. OK. And then um, uh, did we not bring this in? All right, and then we'll need to go ahead and have some getters and setters. And let's go ahead and create those. And then we'll need a two string. So let's go ahead and generate that. OK, so we have our simple data carrier class for our events. Uh, we've set the column def definition to text for description in case we want to have um, you know, some much longer text in there. Um, but overall, this looks pretty good. 
So next thing we'll need for an event is an event repository. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. We'll call this event repository. This is going to be an interface. Again, we're using Spring Data. So we're going to extend the list CRUD repository. The type is event. And the uh, ID type is going to be an integer. So that's all we need for that. To round this out, we are going to create a controller. I'm going to call this event controller. Again, this is a controller in the GraphQL world, so we mark it with at controller annotation. And now what we need to do is we need to get access to that repository. So I'm going to say private final event repository, event repository. Let's add that through constructor injection. And we need two query mappings here, right? We need one for, whoops, at query mapping, we are going to, um, actually we don't even need that. So we're going to return a list of events and we're going to call this events because that's what we called it in our schema. And all we're going to do here is return the event repositories dot find all method. So we'll need one more. So query mapping and this is going to return an optional event and we're going to call this event and this is going to take in an argument so argument integer id and based on that id we can now use the repository to say find by id and we can pass in that id so um what doesn't want to, what don't we like about this uh make event return yeah, I thought that's what we did. Huh, all right, we must have had the wrong import. So um, those are query mappings. That will satisfy these two queries, uh, these two fields here. And we have our event, uh, so we're good to go there. Now we need to set up a session, so uh, we have, again, back in our data model, we have uh, event, and that ties to a collection of sessions. So let's start with session, and then we'll make that uh, association work. So we're going to go here. We're going to create a new package. Let's call this session. And inside of session, we are going to create a session class. So let's say new Java class session. And this is going to be an entity. Um, let's go ahead and copy all this fun stuff. Uh, so let's start here. Again, the associations we're going to leave out. We don't have a tag yet, so I'm going to wait on that. Uh, we need a level, though. A level is really just going to be an enum. So let's say, um, let's go ahead and generate, create a class. I want to create an uh, enum here and we're going to create that in this package and we're going to call it level and this will be beginner intermediate and advanced right okay so that's good for our level um, we need our id uh, so that looks good so cool so we're also going to have in here um, what tags and what is the other one? I can't remember. Uh, oh, yeah, event. So we'll come back to this. Um, and while I'm here, let's do this. So we're going to fix this later, but this is going to have sessions. Um, cool. So we'll come back to that. We're going to create a NORG constructor here. So public session that is going to satisfy JPA. Let's say constructor. Let's say uh, getters and setters. All right, yep, and then finally a two string, great. Okay, so we have session set up. Um, again, we need a session repository. So I'm going to create a new a Java class here. We're going to call this session repository. This is an interface. We're going to extend list crud repository for session and integer. Okay, so we have that. We need a session controller, right? Did we say, oh, we did not set that up. So we may want, let's come back to speakers, but I want to say sessions is going to return a collection of session. 
session ID ID will return a session, right? So those are there. Uh, we need a session controller. So let's say session controller. This is a controller. We will need that repository. So session repository. Uh, let's get that through constructor injection. We'll need a couple of query mappings. This is going to return a list of sessions. We'll call this sessions. And in here, we will return the session repositories dot find all. So similarly to the last one, we need a query mapping for an optional of session. So we'll call this session, and we'll take in an argument of integer ID, and we'll return the session repository dot find by ID, and we'll pass in the ID. So. We have our session controller, we have our session repository, we have a session, and we have a level. Um, so far, so good. Let's just do one more here, and uh, let me open up this schema again. So we're going to need a tag. Um, let's go ahead and do that now. So this is going to go in session. Um, we're going to create a new class. This is going to be an entity. We're going to call it tag. This is going to be an at entity. Let me just double check, did I make entity? Yes, I did make session an entity. So we need an at ID. This is going to be a private integer ID, private string name. And that's all we need. Let's do a no arg constructor for tag and an all args constructor. And then we just need some getters and setters. and our trusty two string. Okay, so that is our tag. We'll come back to the associations on that in a second. We'll kind of wrap all those up together. Um, so now going back to here, we have our tag. We just need our speaker and um, so gender, I was gonna make an enum in, oh yeah, I guess this would be an enum in Java too. So let's set up speaker and gender, and I think just these things around speaker, right? Uh, speaker repository, speaker controller. So let's start off by creating a new package here called speaker. All right, we're gonna create a new Java class in here called speaker. This is, of course, going to be an entity as well. Uh, speaker is going to consist of a bunch more things. So I'm going to copy those and let's paste those in. So this is an at ID. Um, and then we need a gender here. So I'm going to create a enum in here. And this is going to be male, female, non-binary, right? Oops. OK, so there's our gender. And then we just need a public no arg constructor. We need a constructor. Yay. Uh, now I know the um, I know I'm gonna get some comments on this because I always do. Why not use Lombok Dan? Again, a lot of these tutorials are geared towards beginners. If you've never used Lombok, then you have to like set it up, um, you have to add that dependency, you have to make sure that um, annotation processing is on in your ID, and I don't use the same ID as everyone, so um, nothing against Lombok, I just don't like to bring in the extra dependency and set up if I don't need to in a beginner type tutorial. And I like using records, uh, I love records, can't use them with data JPA, so here we are. Okay, so I have my speaker, um, I think that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new repository. So speaker repository. This is an interface. You know the story by now. Extends list CRUD repository, speaker, integer, and we are done with that. We need to create a controller. So I'm going to say speaker controller, and this is going to be a class. This is a at controller annotation. 
and this should be looking just like the rest of them, right? So private, final, uh, speaker, right? We need speaker repository, speaker repository. Let's get that through constructor injection. And we'll do the same song and dance we've done. So we need a list of speakers, speakers. All right, so we have our speaker controller, speaker repository, speaker, and gender. Okay, so I think that is a lot of the boilerplate setup. I think that is going to give us a lot of what we need. Um, before I go in and configure any properties, let's go ahead and try and set these associations up. So the first thing I'll start with is an event. So I need a list of sessions. So I'm going to say that this is a private set of session. I'll call this sessions. We'll say this is a new hash set, right? Okay, so now we need to make this association. We're gonna say this is a one to many. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and cascade uh, all. And uh, this is going to be mapped by event. Right, all right, so now on the event side, um, on the session side, I'm gonna go to session and I need an event. So I'm gonna say private event event, and this is going to be a many to one. So um, what do we not see? Oh, this is not getting imported. So import, yes, that's the one I want. Okay, um, on this side, am I not importing that? Okay, um, semicolon. All right, so I think that association looks okay. Now we need some, I think we missed something over here, so we need some tags. So same thing, we're gonna say that we need a set of tags, because we're not gonna have duplicates here, so we'll just say this is a set. This is going to be one to one to many. And we don't need to define that, so on the tag side, yeah, I don't want to, I don't care about having this bi-directional, so I'm just gonna set this as a one to many here. Uh, so that's why we don't need to go into the level of detail that we did over here with event by setting the map by, because again, we don't want this bi-directional. I just want to set a tag. So I don't, I don't need a tag to tell me like every session that has it. So uh, at least for now. Um, so that's a good start. What did I, was I missing here? So everything looks good there. Um, I think from a speaker standpoint, we would probably have um, an event tied to a speaker, right? Um, but yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, or maybe not at all, actually. Um, we do have the ability to get a list of speakers. And we can get a single speaker. So that is our updated schema. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into application.properties. We're gonna set a couple things. So I want to set some uh, Spring Data JPA properties. Uh, generate DDL goes true. We're gonna create and drop on restart. And I just wanna show some SQL. Um, and then I think that's it. So our database, again, if we were paying attention closely at the beginning, is Postgres. We also have this Docker Compose file, so it's going to spin up a Postgres instance for us. Um, yeah, so I think things are good. Let's see if we can start the application without problem. I don't know. Let's set a database of... Uh, Let's say sessions demo. All right, let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> yep, would help if Doctor was running. All right, so our application started up. Um, no, let's see. So we have some tables being created, event, session, session tags, speaker, tag. That seems like everything we need. Um, and then we have our GraphQL endpoint. We're started on 8080, and everything seems to be working. Cool. So that was awesome. Um, we were able to get this up and running. Now we just need some data in here, right? I need some data. So I'm going to do a little cheating here, and I don't want to just hand write all this data in, right? Well, I'm going to grab a dependency. Again, I've talked about this on the channel in the past, so I'm going to gloss over this a little bit, but this is a package called Data Faker. It allows me to go ahead and create a bunch of fake data because in this world, like I needed an event and a bunch of sessions and a bunch of speakers, and I'm not going to go through and hand create these or create these by hand, Dan. Um, so we're going to generate a bunch of data. So I'm going to create a new package called data. I'm going to create a new Java class in here called data loader. And let's go ahead and paste some code in here and see if we can get this to work. Um, we need our faker. OK. So we'll fix some errors as we're going. But <clears throat> here's our data loader. We're implementing the command line runner. We are bringing in things like the event repository, the speaker repository, the session repository, and here is that faker class. And again, this allows us to just basically fake a bunch of data. So now we're saying, hey, we need to create a new event. I'm going to go ahead and import that. This is a new event, Spring 1 at VMware Explorer. Here's all the data for that event. I'm going to go ahead and save that event. So we're going to persist that off to the database. Now I want to create a list of speakers. Um, so I'm basically saying from 1 to 20, go ahead and create a new speaker. It's going to have some fake name, title, company. Um, I didn't do a random. I probably should do a random here. Uh, we'll fix that later. Um, but we need to enter a gender, um, country, email address, phone number, and username. Once we're done there, we're going to save all of our speakers. Uh, we're going to create a couple tags, so Spring Framework, Spring Boot. Uh, then I'm going to create a list of sessions here. And basically, from 1 to 100, we're going to create a list of sessions. Um, so this should be importing. Why are we not importing? So level right there. Um, and then something's going on here, so we'll need to fix this. Um, oh, I don't think we added the event. Did we? Yeah, I thought we did. So let's go into session. ID, title, description, level. ID, title, description, level. OK, that looks good. And then tags, which is a one to many. And then the event, which is many to one. OK, what is this? Yeah, I cannot resolve constructor. Ah, so we probably generated this before we had that. Yeah, so let's just generate this constructor again now with everything. And that should fix that. OK, so session repository dot save all. I'm saving all my sessions. And then I believe I had this to get an actual random speaker. I don't think we need that for now. So this class looks like it works. We marked it with at component, so it'll get picked up. Again, it implements command line runner, so it's available after the application context is ready. So this should go ahead and run and insert a whole bunch of data. So let's go ahead and restart this. If everything works, we'll see a whole bunch of commands from us logging the, spring, the JPA stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, we saw a bunch of inserts, but then something happened. Unable to find dev.nvega sessions tag with ID of one. OK, so let's go back to our data loader. And I'm just guessing, but let me just look to be sure. Um, unable to find tag with one. So this is saying 0 or 1. Uh, why are we? Oh, no, that's those two. Set of. 
All right, so I'm having an issue with that tag association. I will fix it in the final repository, but for now, I'm just going to remove it. Uh, doesn't don't really need tags as part of the pagination and sorting anyway. So let's go ahead and run this now and see if we can't get this going. So we go through and there we go. So we insert into sessions. So we have a hundred sessions. We have um, hopefully some speakers and yes we do. And then we have an event. So cool. So we have all of the data that we need. Uh, if we go back to our application our properties, we'll want to enable graphical. So um, let's enable this so we can say true. Um, that will allow us to restart this one more time, head back over to the browser. And now I want to go to localhost 8080 slash graphical. Okay, this was from a previous one. Let's just go ahead and remove that. And let's do that. So we can run a query for events. We get all the information we need from there. There's all of the data. Now, let's go ahead and back to our schema. And this is where things are going to get fun. So in the past, what I've done is, OK, for an event, I just want to get all the sessions, right? So I would say sessions. And this is going to be a collection of session. And that's all there is to it, right? Now I can get all 100 sessions for that event and be happy. So let's see if that works. So now in here, I can say sessions. Um, I need to refresh this. That's OK. And now sessions is there. And from sessions, I want the ID, the title, and the description. So now I go ahead and run this. And there we go. There's all 100 sessions for the event. But we know in the real world, what if I don't want to get all the sessions? What if I want to get five at a time or 10 at a time? Maybe we're displaying this on a client somewhere, and we only want to display so many at a time. This is where pagination comes in. This is where the cursor connection specification comes in and gives us something that we can work with to make this happen. All right, so here I am in the Spring for GraphQL documentation. There's a section for pagination. You can see the GraphQL cursor connection specification. So if you want to learn more about that, again, if you've been working with GraphQL, you might have seen this in other implementations. The idea here is that we pass a couple arguments, things like first or after. So I want the first 10 after some type of cursor. From there, you're going to get edges. Uh, that will give you the cursor every time. And then the node is the actual data that you want. Then you also have page info. Um, and then you can just go ahead and read through this specification if you want to learn more about that. So what is going to happen here in Spring for GraphQL? We have connection types. They must be created for every type that needs pagination. Uh, this adds boilerplate and noise to the schema. Spring for GraphQL provides a connection type definition configure to add these types on startup if they're not already present in the parsed schema files. That means that in your schema, you only need to do this. So we can do something like this, and this book connection is automatically going to be created for us. So let's go back to our schema and see what this means. So instead of getting a list of sessions, maybe I want to get paginated sessions. So I would take in the first, after, last, and before. And what this is going to create is a session connection. So I know that the ID is not catching up here, doesn't know what that is, but I promise you it's been created for us already. So great. So now this means that instead of fetching all the sessions, we're gonna we're gonna create, we're gonna get just the ones that we want. Now we need to implement this on our end, right? So under event, so the event controller, we need to declare a data fetcher for sessions. So let's go to our event controller. And we may need to uh, set up something for this. So this is going to be a schema mapping. And we'll talk about what we're going to return in a second. But this is going to be, let's just say void sessions. And now, you know, what are, what are we going to do here? So this needs to first take the parent, which is going to be the event. And this is where things get fun. So we need a way to get the sessions by the event, right? So how can we do that? I think a good place to start 
would be in the session repository. So in the session repository, I need to create a method where I can get the um, all of the sessions by an event ID. So I might, we're gonna start with something called a window. Uh, a window is new to Spring Data. I'm gonna go ahead and reference you to the documentation. There are all kinds of, there are a few different ways to get uh, paginated data in Spring Data. There's also a really nice table in there that says, hey, like when you need it this way, this is the thing that you can reach for. Uh, so Windows New, maybe we'll dive into this a little bit further in another tutorial, but for now, just a way to get some paginated data, but it's a little bit more specific than say uh, a pageable or a slice. So we get a window, we're gonna call this find by event ID. So this is going to take in the um, event ID. We also need something called a scroll position. So scroll position, um, we need the limit, so limit, and we need the sort, so sort, right? So let's go ahead and import this. This is coming from there, and this is coming from there. All right, so now we have this method that we can use. The scroll position uh, has things in here like key set, offset, forwards, backwards. This is just uh, part of dealing with uh, Spring Data stuff here. So we have, this we have this repository method. So we need to call this from our event controller somehow, right? So how are we gonna do that? Um, well, first we need uh, an argument here, which we're gonna get from Spring for GraphQL. So let's say that this is the scroll subrange. So we'll just call this the subrange. And if we look at scroll subrange and download the sources, this is coming from GraphQL data query, container for parameters that limit result elements to a subrange, including a relative scroll position, which our repository needs, number of elements, and direction. So this is kind of the important stuff. So now what we know we are going to return from here is a window of session. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So I'm gonna go ahead and paste some code in here. Now again, this is way, this is why we ended up using the snapshot of Spring Boot 3.2 because this support right here, what we're doing with limit, um, it was not available in a previous version of Spring Data. So we get the scroll position. We say, hey, on the sub range, give me the position or else set it to the scroll position dot offset. We need a limit. Um, so get the count, whatever is passed as the, say, like first or last. So give me the first 10 or first 100, um, or else just default to 10. We could always set that up as a default parameter somewhere in our configuration if we wanted to. We want to sort by something. So I'm going to sort by title and ascending. And then, hey, um, from the session repository, go ahead and find by event ID, and we need to bring that in. So private, final, session repository, session repository, add that as a constructor parameter, and that looks good. Um, so now, um, required type is org hibernate query SPI limit, and the provided type was the data domain. Did we get those types wrong? Data domain. Ah, so I think that is wrong. Okay, let's see, did that fix that? All right, so let's fix that, sort, sort, and now that should fix that. Okay, cool, so now what happens when we call event sessions, this uh, is the data resolver for that field, so this gets called. Now this could easily reach out to a, another service in our organization, but in this case, it's just doing pagination. Um, we figure out what we need to do pagination here, and then uh, we return just the window of that session. So think of it as a window into the entire collection. We're just getting like those 10 records. Okay, so this means that if we restart application and everything works, 
we should be able to call sessions but pass some some parameters into there, right? Um, so we could say that we just want the first uh, few. So let's try that. All right, so now when we ask for sessions, we are going to provide some parameters. We see first, after, last, before. So I want to say that I want the first three records. Now from there, this is where the cursor connection spec comes in. We don't just ask for the data. Remember, we get things back like edges, page info. So from edges, I can get things like the current cursor. I can also get the node. So the node is going to include the data that we're interested in. So from the node, I might say, give me the ID, the title, and the description. And then I can also get page info uh, outside of the edges. So let's just say here, I might want page info like what is available, has next, um, the start cursor, end cursor, etc. So let's go ahead and run that. And now we see that we get edges. Inside of there, we get nodes. So I have a node. So these are each of the sessions, but there's only three of them. And then we have page info, has next page. Um, okay, that's great. So what else can we get out of here? What is the start cursor? What is the end cursor? So let's go ahead and run that. We see that the start cursor is this, the end cursor is this. So okay, so uh, if that's the start cursor and this is the end cursor, now I should be able to do um, something else. So we know this is uh, sorted by title. So after many, summarize this one. I should be able to come in here and say first three, but after the um, cursor, which is the end cursor. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see that we get three different ones. And then again, here's the end cursor. Uh, we can go ahead and provide that and we can get the next three. So that is how you paginate through it, using a combination of what nodes are available, what is the current cursor, what's the next cursor, what's the end cursor, those kind of things. So again, um, that is a really nice way to paginate through data. This is based on a specification, so we know that if we're implementing this in all of our services across our organization, we know that these are gonna be consistent, which I really like. So cool, um, again, check out the documentation for a little bit more info on some of the stuff that we just went through. But hey, if you found this useful, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding.